My guest believes that marriage is worth working for, and it's worth protecting. He's made it his life's work. Dave Carter is the assistant pastor responsible for counseling ministries at the First Evangelical Free Church in Fullerton, California. He trains and supervises the large lay counseling program of the church. He holds direct graduate degrees in biblical literature and in marital and family therapy. And uh, Dave, 42 years happily married. I love to point out, because it's rare, okay. that you are not doing this out of the survival yeah, position. Yeah, out of recovering. <clears throat> not in yeah. your case. Well, I, 42 years happily married, yes. 42 years with some sporadic conflict, absolutely. It just goes with the territory, so. You were with us before, and we were so uh, enriched. Mm -hmm. The insights were, uh, I think, very surprising for many of us. And we decided we just wanted to go on the offensive with marriages in Canada and what you can bring to us, what we can do with a week set apart to really uh, inform, uh, challenge, and encourage people. Mm. Well, I'm looking forward to this. I really am. There's lots of things happening in the world of marriage, and many of them are not good. So where do you want to start? I'll leave it up to you. Well, you know, before we look at what's happening in marriage today, okay. big picture, I I'd like folks who may not know to understand where your passion for wrecked marriages okay. being restored comes from. Okay, well, first of all, it starts when I was uh, just a high school kid, and my first uh, senior pastor in the church we were attending ran off with one of the women in the church. Now, I was too young to really grasp that, didn't really understand what that meant, but boy, it sure upset my parents, and it upset the whole church. It just, the church was just kind of trashed for a while. And then I went off to school, seminary, and took a youth ministry, and uh, that senior pastor in a rapidly growing church and just seemed in the center of God's blessing, he ran off with a lady in the church. And I became a detective. Overnight, I became a detective trying to find him because he didn't tell us where he went. So I made two long plane trips and finally on the second one, I found him and knocked at the door and went out, talked with him, begged him to come back to his family and he wouldn't do it. And I just broke down and wept like a baby. But my friend who was with me took me back to the airport. And when I finally got control of myself, I said, you know what, when I get home, I'm going back to school. I'm going to figure out why people do that. So I went back to graduate school, enrolled in 30 days. And that was 31 years ago. And I've been working at it ever since. <laughs> I am thankful <clears throat> that this wasn't a derailment of your faith. Mm. You know, uh, many people have asked me about that. If I ever became cynical and... You know, the more you listen to people, the more you understand what really happens in these kind of experiences, you realize it could happen to anybody. Mm -hmm. And it could happen very quickly. And you can get in over your head before you know it. It's like the frog in the kettle thing. Mm -hmm. You don't even realize the temperature's going up until it's too late. We'll talk about that, I'm we sure. We will be talking about that. And in your book, Close Calls, uh, uh, most of your clients are Christians. Mm -hmm. They're people who are living their lives to please God. Mm -hmm. and. And we'll discover that um, I don't think one of them ever thought this could happen. Oh, I don't work with people who intentionally go out looking for affairs. They don't come and see me. I'm too threatening to them. <laughs> so what happens, the, the people I see are desperate to restore their marriage, or if they're still involved and they're not sure they want to save it, at least they know they need to work through what's happened to them and figure it out before they move on in life. Okay, why are we in such a mess? I mean, you've talked about a perfect storm, mm -hmm. and there are several arenas coming together here. Environmentally, what's happening? Well, environmentally, the whole definition of marriage is changing. It's no longer just a real fixed husband and wife for life eternally until you die. It's many times serial marriages anymore. It's very different than it was 50 years ago. And you have such a high level of cohabitation anymore because young adults don't want to go through the trauma of divorce. So they're very anxious about getting locked into a single person. And that, uh, this is impacting the church. Oh, it is. George Barna's survey mm -hmm. found that 34% of evangelicals mm -hmm. said they didn't have a problem with cohabitation. Yeah. If it's uh, intentional and if there's that temporary commitment and of course, we know that it doesn't always work when children are born or you want to raise children in a family like that. It just has all kinds of problems. But historically, too, we've got to remember that 50% of these young adults come from adult or are adult children of divorce. 
they're coming out of divorced families. They experienced the trauma, the pain. They made those childhood vows to themselves, I'll never do this to my kid or my children. So yet they don't know how to really create what they're looking for. They haven't seen it practiced. Most of us have only seen one marriage up close and personal, that of our parents. And so it's very difficult to do what you've never seen modeled. That was a uh, painful realization in my young adult life mm. as I came into the family of God and realized I hadn't actually seen mm. a Christ-centered home and marriage. Mm. And the statistic uh, that you give us is 50% mm -hmm. of our current young adults uh -huh. haven't seen nope. what marriage was meant to be. I, I framed this and I, I wanted to put it on the screen mm -hmm. because I think it's an important message to all of us. Uh, I, I know a, uh, a friend who, when I asked her, what's the most important aspect of your parenting as a mother? Mm -hmm. What's the most important thing that you do for your children? And she said, modeling, mm -hmm. modeling. And here's a statement. Modeling is the most powerful behavioral determinant known to man. Mm -hmm. I think we need to put that on our fridge. Uh -huh. Yeah, you do. And, and, and you need to help and realize as you do this that you're helping your kids understand how great marriage is. Mm -hmm. Now that doesn't mean you have to gloss over problems or difficulties, but they need to see that sacrifice. That's where the happiness comes, is giving, not getting. And so many people approach marriage with the idea of what they're going to get out of it, what they're going to receive. Mm -hmm. And it takes a lot of work and effort on, on both parties' parts. And infidelity, tragically, is uh, passed on. Oh, it is. The statistics show. Right shown. down the family tree. And then, of course, we got a whole other thing happening here with these young adults because when they put off marriage until they're financially secure and they have a home and they're, they're settled and all those kinds of things, many times two-thirds of their life at that point they've been sexually active and aware. Do you realize how difficult that is in this culture with Hollywood and TV and the media and everything? Two-thirds of their lives have already been spent trying to resist this sexual temptation. It's very, very difficult in this environment and it just adds fuel to this fire. And of course, then there's the whole cultural thing that's happening where um, they're just not uh, um, working by themselves. They have a tendency to be put in teams. It's, it's men and women doing things together. They go to school on teams. They, they work out, and uh, men and women do it together. They serve together. They minister in the church together. They sing together. So they're all the time rubbing shoulders with the opposite sex. And sometimes those days are going to be tough days when you go to work or when you go to work out or when you go to play or whatever the case is. And it's very easy to get attracted to someone in this culture when you're just meeting someone all the time of the opposite sex. And they're always looking good.